Historian Lonnie Bunch is the first African American to serve as head of the 173 year old Smithsonian Institution. He's in charge of 19 museums, 21 libraries, and the National Zoo, and he oversees about 7,000 employees in all. Bunch is also founding director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. It has welcomed more than 6 million visitors since opening in 2016. Bunch writes about his journey establishing the museum in his new book, A Fool's Errand, Creating the National Museum of African American History and Culture in the Age of Bush, Obama, and Trump. <laughs> yeah. And he joins us at the table. Lonnie, good morning. You're very morning. busy, morning. Lonnie Bunch. <laughs> very busy Absolutely. man. Yeah. Also, a very successful museum. Yeah. So yes. what I, why is it a fool's errand, given where it ended up? Because when I started, everybody told me it was foolish to take this on. Because it started with no staff, no idea where the museum would be, no collections, no money. Nothing. And people told me, you should be the second director, because the first one will fail. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Retrospect, that might have been a good idea. Yeah, you called it the museum of no in the beginning, because you did get so many no's. It, Go ahead. No, it was just amazing to me that how many people really didn't believe what happened. This is never going to work. But I also like, Lonnie, from the very beginning, it wasn't a fubu moment for you where it's for us, by us. You said this is not a museum for black people, by black people. This is a quintessential American story. And I think that's so important. What's the point you're making? My point is that often we look at African American history as an ancillary story. But yet, if you want to understand American core values of spirituality, resiliency, optimism, it's the African-American story. So I want people to realize this is their story regardless of who they are. But you were told, uh, you were stuck. First, let's say, lots of people had lots of ideas about what should be in the museum. <laughs> museum. Did they oh, not? Yeah, absolutely. And what they should not be in the and museum. And what exactly. should not. And you were stopped by an older black woman who said, whatever you do, don't talk about slavery. That's right. She was a church lady walking from church, and I was walking, and she said, whatever you do, I love what you're doing, but if you talk about slavery, you're going to hurt the community. And yeah. you thought what? And I thought, if slavery was the number one thing people didn't want to know about, it was the number one thing I had to let people know. Yeah. Because, because it was the quintessential basis of America. And I thought that in some ways we're still dealing with the legacy of slavery. So I wanted people to understand how important that institution was. You had a battle building this collection. And one of the stories I love is, is, is a conversation you ended up having with Chuck Berry. Uh -huh. You wanted his guitar. <laughs> he wanted you to have his car. Exactly. <laughs> so Chuck Berry, we call him. I want the guitar. He wrote Maybelline and all of that. And so he said, I'm only going to give you the guitar if you take my candy apple red Cadillac. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want this Cadillac. You know? but my <laughs> it turned out to be a big attraction. The staff loved it. People love it. It's the number one thing people take pictures of in the museum. But he didn't, he didn't trust you in the beginning. He started yelling on the phone the next day they didn't trust me because as he put it i just found out you work for the federal government oh. So, oh, <laughs> he was wow. used to the irs coming after right. yeah well exactly. i was gonna say the, the donation might be a good tax write-off right. exactly <laughs> but now you've got forty thousand artifacts most of them came from people's basement and garages i think the the collection that you did to get this museum in place i think is astounding the work you and your staff started with a staff of two yes. what you and tasha coleman did well i think the the thing for me was i knew that we couldn't just have technology because at the smithsonian you have the greensboro lunch counter the ruby slippers the right flyer so i said we had to find good stuff so i one day i fell asleep and i woke up in front of the television and there was antique roadshow Oh. I'd never heard of it, yeah. you know, and I thought, what a good idea. So I put a new <laughs> spin on it, called it Saving African American Treasures, right. and we went around the country and said, bring out your stuff. And 70% of all the things we found wow. in the collection came from basements, trunks, and attics of people's I, homes. I love, we, we said at the top, this is a very popular museum. You actually got a call from somebody alleging to be your seventh grade girlfriend? What, Wanting what, tickets? What I love is everybody wants tickets, no matter where yeah. I go, right? <laughs> and so I got this call, and this woman said she wanted tickets, and I said, I don't do tickets. And she said... And also, I don't think you're my girlfriend well, But then. she said, she was my seventh grade girlfriend, she said the name, and I'm thinking, but when you're 13, you remember every crush you had. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know her at all. But Did you was, give her the the ticket? It was such a good lie. I gave her the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Take right. a shot. Lonnie, Lonnie Bunch, thanks so much. A Fool's Errand is on sale now.